Welcome to section 15 of Bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Staphylococcus aureus, which you can see right here. This scene will take place back during the time of the wizards and dragons. Our main character in this scene will be the wizard guy, who we'll call Merlin. Merlin was minding his business in this little village when out of nowhere, a powerful dragon dropped out of the sky and began burning up the place. As you can see, Merlin has a magical staff in his hand that he's using to defend the village. The staff in Merlin's hand is our symbol for Staphorius. So, staff for Staphorius. If you look over at the left side of the image, you can see that we've included a purple hue to the image. Just like in other images, this is to help you remember that Staphorius is a gram-positive organism. This is a gram stain of Staphylococci organisms. First off, notice that the organism stains purple, which is why it's a gram-positive organism. And second, notice that the bacteria are circular or cocci-shaped, and that they form little clusters or groups. This type of morphology is unique to Staphylococci. Okay, moving on, notice that we've added a cat to the image. This is Merlin's loyal cat, and it's our symbol for catalase, because cat sounds like catalase. For all of the organisms that are catalase positive, we've included a cat in the image. And if the organism is catalase negative, then we haven't included a cat in the image. This is why in all of our Streptococcus videos, you'll recall that we didn't mention a cat. Streptococci are catalase negative. So again, cat for catalase positive. This is a picture demonstrating the catalase test, which we covered in more detail in section 7, which was our video on listeria. Recall that the bubbles right here indicate that the organism is catalase positive. Okay, next, notice that we've shown Merlin standing next to a bay. Just like in other pictures, the bay here is our symbol for beta hemolytic. So, Staphorius is beta hemolytic. This is a figure of the three types of hemolysis, which we covered in more detail in the Listeria video. Again, beta hemolysis looks like this. Notice the clearing zone of hemolysis surrounding the colony, right here. In the image, you'll notice that we've now added a very tall man mounted on the dragon. This is Merlin's nemesis, and he's come riding on the dragon to fight Merlin and burn down the village. We've shown this man very close to the viewer's perspective to make him look taller than everyone else in the image. Tall man sounds kind of like mannitol, so he'll be our symbol for mannitol fermentation. So Staphorius ferments mannitol. This is an image of a mannitol fermentation test. Mannitol salt agar contains a high sodium chloride content and the sugar mannitol, which together act as a selective medium. The agar also has a pH sensitive dye. Therefore, when organisms ferment mannitol, the acidic waste product causes the pH sensitive dye to turn yellow. So from the image above, we can conclude that the organisms growing on the pink part of the plate right here must be able to grow in the presence of a high sodium chloride content, but that they do not ferment mannitol. The organisms growing on the yellow part of the plate right here can also grow in the presence of a high sodium chloride content, but they can also ferment mannitol, which is why this side of the plate is yellow. So again, Staphorius is a mannitol fermenter. So if it was grown on this type of agar, it would look like this. Okay, now notice that we've added a shield with the letter A to the image. This tall man is lucky he has the shield because without it, he would have been shocked by Merlin's magic. The shield with the letter A on it is our symbol for protein A. This is a virulence factor produced by Staph aureus that binds to the FC region of IgG and prevents opsonization and phagocytosis. The shield seems like a fitting symbol for this idea because shields are used to block an attack, just like protein A is used to block the host's immune system from destroying the organism. So again, the shield with the letter A on it for protein A prevents opsonization and phagocytosis. If you look closely at the dragon's nose, you can see that we've shown fire coming out of it. We've done this to draw your attention to the nose and ultimately to help you remember that Staphorius colonizes the nose. So fire coming out of the dragon's nose for colonizes the nares. Next, notice that we've added this guy right here who appears to have been wounded throughout the excitement. Let's zoom up so you can see it a bit better. As you can see, that's quite a bit of blood. And if you look closely, you can see that the blood appears kind of thick and clumpy. There's also a thick patch of dried blood on his shirt. So in other words, it's coagulated blood. The coagulated blood here should help you remember that Staphorius is coagulase positive. This is a figure showing a coagulase tube test. In this test, colonies of the organism of interest are placed inside of a tube containing plasma. Because the plasma contains clotting factors, including fibrinogen, if the coagulase enzyme is present, then it will convert fibrinogen to fibrin, which is responsible for clot formation. Therefore, an organism that is coagulase positive will cause the plasma to clot, resulting in a thick solution, which you can see in the image right here. Okay, now we're going to discuss the clinical features of Staph aureus, and we'll start with the toxin-mediated diseases. Notice that we've included this guy on fire. 
Apparently he was a bit too close to the dragon and went up in flames. The fire is scalding his skin, which should help you remember scalded skin syndrome. In this syndrome, an exfoliative toxin, which is a protease, causes the skin to fall off. So scalded guy on fire for scalded skin syndrome. Now we've added a guy vomiting to the image. He's obviously a bit overwhelmed by this whole situation, which is understandable. A dragon is trying to destroy him with fire. Anyways, we've included this guy to help you remember another toxin-mediated disease, which is rapid onset food poisoning. This occurs due to ingestion of a preformed heat-stable toxin, which is also known as enterotoxin. The toxin has a short incubation period of about two to six hours, after which the individual will develop non-bloody diarrhea and emesis. So guy vomiting for rapid onset food poisoning. Now we've shown this unfortunate guy behind Merlin accidentally getting shocked. Merlin was trying to fight the tall man on the dragon, but he didn't notice that an innocent citizen was behind him. We've shown this guy getting shocked to help you remember the final toxin-mediated disease of Stepharius, which is toxic shock syndrome. So guy getting shocked for toxic shock syndrome. Let's zoom up on this guy and discuss this in a bit more detail. First, notice that he's wearing a cape. Many superheroes wear capes, so this seemed like a fitting symbol for super antigen. Toxic shock syndrome toxin 1, or TSST1, is a super antigen which causes binding of MHC class 2 and T cell receptors, resulting in overactivation of T cells. This in turn can result in an overwhelming release of cytokines, which is clinically manifested as shock. So, superhero like cape for super antigen. Toxic shock syndrome is classically associated with prolonged use of a tampon or nasal packing. To help you remember this, we've shown this guy with a tissue jammed up in his nose. The electricity immediately tensed up his entire body, causing him to vomit. The vomit should help you remember that toxic shock syndrome may cause vomiting. Clearly, this person is getting shocked, as should hopefully be apparent by all of the electricity and the name of this toxin-mediated disease. So, hopefully you're not too shocked that toxic shock syndrome causes shock. From pathophysiology, you should recall that shock is characterized by decreased perfusion to the tissues, so many organs may experience damage during an episode of shock. For example, the liver will be damaged, resulting in increased AST and ALT. The rise in AST and ALT, as well as other common sense lab abnormalities, haven't been included in this image because this should hopefully be pretty obvious if you understand the pathophysiology. So, guy getting shocked for shock. Next, if you look closely on this guy's arm, you can see a bunch of little red spots with some skin falling off. This is to help you remember that toxic shock syndrome can also cause a desquamating rash. Okay, that's everything you need to know about the toxin-mediated diseases. Now let's discuss the inflammatory diseases. If you look closely at the dragon, you'll notice that it has a bunch of little scales. Scales are tough like bones, so in this image, the scales on the dragon will be our symbol for osteomyelitis. So, Stepharius can cause osteomyelitis. Another inflammatory disease is septic arthritis. To represent this, we've included this guy by the bay with red knees. He must have gotten a little burned from all of the fire. Anyways, this guy with red knees is our symbol for septic arthritis because this classically presents with a red, hot, swollen knee. Over on the left side of the image right here, we've shown this man coughing next to all of the smoke. Let's zoom up so you can see it a bit better. It shouldn't be too surprising that he's coughing, considering that he's completely surrounded by smoke. This guy coughing should help you remember that Staphorius causes pneumonia. More specifically, you should remember that pneumonia is usually a post-viral bacterial pneumonia. In other words, it usually occurs after a viral infection. To help you remember this detail, we've included some mosquitoes around him. Mosquitoes are small insects that like to feed off of humans, just like a virus is small and uses the host to replicate and cause disease. So, guy coughing with mosquitoes around him for post-viral bacterial pneumonia. Also notice that this guy has some red burns on his arm. The fact that his skin is affected should help you remember skin infections, and the red inflamed part of his arm should help you remember abscesses. So, Staphorius causes skin infections and abscesses. Okay, now let's discuss methicillin-resistant Staphorius, or MRSA. To represent MRSA, we've shown this chest of myrrh falling off of the cart. If you look closely, you can see that the chest says myrrh on it. So, chest of myrrh for MRSA. MRSA becomes resistant to methicillin by altering penicillin binding proteins, which are known as PBPs. PBPs are associated with the bacterial cell wall. From the image, notice that there are bricks falling off of the wall and landing around the cart, which caused the chest of myrrh to fall off as the cart ran over some bricks. So, in a sense, the altered wall caused the myrrh chest to fall off of the cart. All of this together represents that MRSA have altered penicillin binding proteins. Because MRSA is resistant to methicillin, it must be treated differently with more potent antibiotics, such as vancomycin. In this image, we've shown a large caravan of carts on fire as the village panics and attempts to run away from the dragon. 
Caravan sounds like van and is more fitting for this era. So in this image, the caravan will be our symbol for vancomycin. So caravan for vancomycin. Next, notice that we've included some sapphires on the cart. Just like in other videos, sapphires are used to represent cephalexin. This is to help you remember that an effective treatment for non-MRSA infections is cephalexin. Finally, we've shown some old-looking medicinal vials on the cart, which are used to represent drugs. The fact that the drugs are on top of this cart should help you remember that another inflammatory disease of Staph aureus is endocarditis in IV drug users. So drug on cart for endocarditis on IV drug users. Okay, now that we've finished discussing the image, let's review with a question. A 27-year-old female presents to the emergency department due to a five-hour history of fever, rash, and altered mental status. Her blood pressure is 76 over 58, and she's tachycardic. She is examined thoroughly, and a used tampon is removed from the vagina. A gram stain of a nasal swab specimen reveals gram-positive cocci in clusters. The organism most likely responsible for this patient's presentation produced the systemic syndrome through which of the following mechanisms? A. Overactivation of cyclic AMP. B. Lecithinase mediated degradation of tissue. C. Toxin B mediated disruption of the cytoskeleton. Or D. Excessive release of cytokines. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient has toxic shock syndrome, which can be deduced based on the fever, rash, altered mental status, hypotension, and the presence of a used tampon in the vagina. All of this information, along with the gram stain from the nose, is plenty of information to conclude that the organism we're dealing with is Staph aureus. With this in mind, we're asked about the mechanism of toxic shock syndrome. Recall that this is caused by toxic shock syndrome toxin 1, or TSST1. This is a superantigen which causes binding of MHC class 2 and T-cell receptors, resulting in overactivation of T-cells. Ultimately, this results in an overwhelming release of cytokines, which is clinically manifested as shock. So the correct answer is D, excessive release of cytokines. A is true of several toxins, but Staph aureus does not affect cyclic AMP. B is describing the alpha toxin of Clostridium perfringens. C is describing the toxin of C. diff. So again, the correct answer is D excessive release of cytokines. From the image, this guy wearing a cape and getting shocked right here should help you remember that TSST1 is a superantigen and can cause shock. 